I want you to amputate my leg. You cannot imagine the weight of those words as you hear them come out of your mouth. On Mother's Day 2011, I was hiking with my wife and fell 110 feet off of a waterfall. This ended with me being flown to a university hospital and having several surgeries to save not only my life, but attempt to save my limb. After the surgeries, the orthopedic surgeons come to me and tell me, we're going to fuse your knee and your ankle. There was no choice. We're just going to do it. But that's not what I wanted. Had he fused my knee and my ankle, I'd be left with nothing but a physiological peg leg. No, I want you to amputate my leg. My doctor refused this request still, saying that it's medically irresponsible to amputate a limb that still has a pulse. So I fired him. I moved on to another physician who would see things as that I did. With the right technology, a prosthetic would allow me to get back to my life where I had left off. Not only as a paramedic, but also as a husband and a father. Losing my leg ended up being the easy part of my journey. The hard part was attaining the right prosthetic. See, prosthetic technology has grown by leaps and bounds through the years, thanks mostly, in fact, to veterans who've returned to war with lost limbs. The Department of Defense helps spend millions of dollars to develop prosthetics that only replace a limb, but they act more like flesh and bone. Most able-bodied people take for granted simple movements that terrify the average amputee, a step to the side, or even just stepping backwards away from your sink. These movements can trigger their knees to bend and result in terrifying falls and countless hospital visits. So the insurance companies, they don't want to pay for these advanced technology prosthetics. And I can kind of understand why, but they'll give you all these different reasons as to why they don't want to do it. The main reason is the cost. The prosthetic system that I wear from my hip to my foot costs over $100,000. It sounds quite expensive because it is. I thought that since I'd paid into my insurance company for the last six years and only used them for a few doctor's visits every now and again, that getting my prosthetic would be as easy as filling a prescription. I would take it to my insurance company, say, this is what my doctor wants me to have, and in the mail would come my nice prosthetic and I would get to walk away. It wasn't that at all. You see, they rate us on a level to our projected ability. Not what you are or what you could be, but what they think you might be. This level goes from a K0 up to a K4. A K0 says that you're bedridden, you're not going to get a leg because you're not going to use it. Up to a K4, who is your athlete, you're highly active, you know, your younger adults, who they think, you know, we'll get some use out of it, so we'll spend the money on them. So after they refused my, my decision, or my limb, I was left to decide, am I going to settle for this inferior limb that they'll pay for? Or am I going to go without a leg and see what I can get? I chose to go legless and fight. So I turned to the only place that I knew. I turned to social media. I got on my blog and wrote about how the insurance companies had said that, you know, you don't get this limb and it's going to keep me from getting back to the life that I held so dear as a paramedic. So we go onto the blog and I say, you know, put on there everything that had happened. And the readers of my blog, police, fire, EMS, strangers from around the world, took up this fight and ran. They contacted the insurance companies. They shut down their switchboards. They clouded their servers with emails. They bombed them all over Facebook and Twitter. And within three hours, I got a call from the chief medical director saying, please, make them stop. <laughs> we will give you your leg if you tell them to go away. So I won. I got what I needed, but I was left to wonder how many other people lost this battle for me to win? How many others could be doing so much more with their lives if they only had the right limb? You see, according to the Amputee Coalition of America, there are 2 million amputees in the U.S. Every year, another 185,000 joins that rank. Statistically, we're a very small group, but the money our limbs can cost can be astronomical. So I can understand that they don't want to pay for these limbs, that it's way too much money to spend. But I'm telling you now that together we can change the lives of countless amputees. I've started a petition on whitehouse.gov to make President Obama look into the fact that insurance was filed my prosthetic under the same category as a potty chair or a set of crutches. So with this, we can get them to change the law, because sadly, the only way they will change their mind is to change the laws that they will operate by. That's the only way the insurance companies will move on. So you have to realize 
to me, and this hits very close, that freedom of mobility is a basic right. I should be able to walk. These people deserve, <laughs> these people deserve their lives. Losing my limb never made me disabled. The only disability comes with the ability to get the correct prosthetic. Thank you.